This is the budget where they're reaping the rewards of two years of relative austerity. Um, they've sort of opened the purse strings to some extent, although expenditure growth is still fairly constrained. The centrepiece of the budget is uh, an investment of between six and eight billion dollars for the east-west tunnel, although the actual government spending on that will only be about 224 million dollars next financial year, with 70 million dollars spent the year after that. So it remains very unclear how they're going to find the rest of the money to fund this major project. They're building the first stage of several, um, connecting the Eastern Freeway through to the Tullamarine Freeway with a tunnel, um, go under Royal Park and down um, Alexandra Parade. So it's a sort of fairly major infrastructure project. On the other hand, there's very little money, just $10 million to progress the Melbourne Metro Rail project, which is in fact deemed by Infrastructure Australia to be ready to proceed. There is a fair amount of investment for, for across the board, really. Uh, there's money for, for road upgrades, for level crossing upgrades, for hospitals, for schools. Um, there's money for the port of Hastings to begin developing that as Victoria's major container port, although it's a long way off still as a, as a project. Um, I, I think they have loosened the purse strings to some extent. Net debt's expected to peak at about 6.6% of the state economy, which is slightly higher than before, although it's still fairly modest, and I don't think that's going to jeopardise in any way the state's AAA credit rating, uh, which is seen as a sort of sacrosanct political objective of the state government. When Michael O'Brien handed down the budget, he said that Victoria had managed the budget much more effectively than other states. This obviously budget is taking place at a very difficult time economically around the country. We're seeing uh, governments, particularly in Canberra, bleeding red ink. We're seeing massive deficits. We're seeing spending get out of control. That is not the story of the Victorian budget. The Victorian budget is one which has got good economic management at its core and has got strong economic results for Victorians. I think the state government can rightly claim to have some of the strongest finances in the nation. In fact, the only state that has stronger finances, I'd say, is Western Australia. And of course, they're a special case because they're absolutely rolling in money from the mining boom. So look, I think you have to say they've managed the budget quite well. Uh, revenue is expected to grow by around about an annual average of 4.1%, whereas expenditure is being held back at around about 2.7% over the four-year budget period. So that's how they've been able to produce fairly strong surpluses. So the surplus is expected to rise from around $225 million next financial year to something like $2.5 billion at the end of four years. So it's a fairly sharp increase as the state government prepares to fight the, uh, the state election next year. Um, I dare say a key theme will be strong economic management and also infrastructure investment, both of which are um, very strong themes of this budget.